And he's probably deserving of a wave. He's working very hard to uh, wave at all of uh, all of us. So I'm sure you'll show your appreciation. Safely back on board there, and the hoist will now be stowed away, ready for the Merlin to make an over-the-shoulder departure in the downwind direction. involvement in this program. They've led the uh, Merlin Capability Sustainment Program, as it's known, which has upgraded the F after Mark 1, Mark 2, to upgrade the uh, changes in the cockpit with improved mission systems. There are large digital displays now in the cockpit, including touch screens instead of analog ones. It's a program costing some £750 million, pounds, and 820 Naval Air Squadron was the first frontline unit of the four Merlin squadrons completely to re-equip with the new example. This year has seen several milestones for the fielding of the Merlin HM2, among them the aircraft's first landing on a Type 23 frigate, and there was a large maritime exercise called Deep Blue earlier in the year in the Western Approaches, during which Merlin HM2s flew off HMS Illustrious. I think positioning now, just to give a little uh, nod and a farewell before they uh, make a couple of final passes. <laughs> yes, we should see here a climb up to 500 feet and, uh, well, that's beginning now. From this, the Merlin will transition into a 40 degree nose over before proceeding into a 360 degree flat turn. in any ship with a capable flight deck. We expect, of course, to see the Merlins on the Navy's new aircraft carrier in due course. Absolutely, that uh, would be very good news. Uh, it's still quite a big piece to put on the back of the ship, though, even though there is the room now. If you ever, actually, you should take a trip on board one of those ships, you know, it is uh, quite tight. The AW101, as the basic design is now known, the, the Merlin and its variants also in service with the air arms of Denmark, Italy, Japan, Portugal and Canada. And Italy has just taken on a new variant into service. The Italian Air Force now operating the HH101 Caesar for combat search and rescue duties. That first flew this year and those helicopters equipped with a refueling probe for in-flight refueling purposes. the uh, route ahead and the cyclic there giving them the farewell wave so uh, again if you're down that uh, eastern end you give them a wave as they come back in to recover here's a very nice contribution from the 
Royal Navy in this fine evening like the Augusta Westland Merlin HM2. Do you know what? I was just thinking of the normal weather in Cold Rose. <laughs> Even in the middle of the summer, they put up with some of the most shocking weather of the United Kingdom. They'd be absolutely delighted not to just to represent the Royal Navy, but to be doing it in such fine weather. And particularly after a few serviceability problems with the aircraft over the last two days, as you said. Great to get uh, get them all involved. A full tri-service pack uh, delivered here at the third day of the Royal International Air to Marvellous news. Altogether, something different now to end the day. Yes, our final display item and our final aerobatic team. Indeed, part of our celebration of 50 display seasons for the Royal Air Force Red Arrows. They're always privileged to have a large number of display teams here, and especially so in this very auspicious year. The Italian National Aerobatic Team has been a regular visitor to the show over the years, first with its Fiat G91s, and now with the Air Mackey MB339, or the AT339A, as it's now known.